The second calibration that you want to do is the elect is in the electrical section. It is the mod resistance. Uh, this setting will uh, modify the cold ohms that your device reads and you can set this, it's an offset, that you can set that will lower your resistance down and you can make uh, your new mod that you're calibrating here read exactly the same as all other DNA 200s that have been calibrated when you connect a individual atomizer. Um, the way that we're going to do this is with what's called a shorting pin. This is a copper pin, um, a copper little block looking thing that has a 510 um, thread cut into it so that you can screw it into your 510 and we're going to determine what the internal resistance of your mod is and we're going to put that internal resistance of your mod into this mod resistance and when you uh, attach an atomizer to your mod it will subtract out the ohms it reads from uh, it will subtract out this value from the ohms it reads so that Mod A that's been calibrated that has a larger internal resistance will give the same results as far as ohms as Mod B which has a lower internal resistance. Uh, the, the goal is to make it to where the only resistance that the uh, mod is reading is that of the coil. The closer you can get to where it is only reading the coils ohms and not reading the any resistance from the 510 connection or the switches or the solder points and everything else involved, the uh, more accurate the temperature control will be, the more accurate the wattage, if you're just using wattage mode, will be. It will also allow you to use the exact same profiles that you've created for mod A, um, you can save them and then load them on mod B and you should have if just about the exact same vape because the, the, uh, when you put this, the Addy on mod B, you will be getting the exact same results as far as the ohms of the atomizer. Uh, I am going to assume that you have already followed the part one calibration which gives you these thermal settings. Uh, it is definitely best to have already know what the ambient temperature is and that value right there, the uh, case USB charge temperature rise in degrees Fahrenheit is perhaps the most important. It, it allows the, the uh, mod to know what the um, um, ambient temperature is based on its reading of the board temperature and if it's not set then your ohms will can potentially read a small amount different uh, just because the mod doesn't understand what the temperature is. So having done the first section switching to the second section uh, using the shorting pin that I'm going to go ahead and stop this and show you a video of me in, uh, inserting the mod, uh, the shorting pin, and you can see what it is that I'm doing. Okay, I feel it touch there a little bit. And there's a pretty good connection. 
And from there, I'm probably reading some ohms. And now I screw it all the way in. To where it's pretty tight. I don't want to compress the spring too much. Unnecessarily. And call that all the way in. And you just kind of fiddle with it and see what kind of readings you're getting. And the goal is to kind of get an average of what you read while you're in contact with the pen. Now that you've seen what it looks like in real life doing this, I'm going to show you what it looks like on the uh, Evolve eScribe software as you do this. Notice that my mod resistance is set at zero. This is a unit I've, it's a different unit I've calibrated in the past and um, cross-checked it against all the other mods and everything's good on it. Uh, so I, I know what this number needs to be already, but I'm going to show you how to do the pin thing now. Uh, the first thing I'll note is I set it up for a wattage mode. I put it in watts because the way the temperature control uh, setting of ohms works is it compares a raw reading yeah, let me show you it compares the raw ohm reading and subtracts out the number that we enter in the mod resistance thing to get the nominal ohms which is what Canthal would think the ohms are it then uses the type of, temp of wire that you're using to estimate based on the temperature if if this was 85 degrees or something then it would know that the actual ohms is somewhat less than what it's getting from canthal ohms if it were adjusted to the 70 degrees which is where it's trying to set it at so raw ohms minus the mod resistance gives you nominal ohms and then it calculates a temperature ohms based on how much the room temperature is above 70 degrees. So I've completely cleaned that um, uh, shorting pin with, I happen to use Brasso, whatever you're using, to uh, get it to be a very clean connection. And I have uh, wiped out the 510 connection on the mod using uh, alcohol in a q-tip and I'm inserting it into the mod right now and just as it touches hadn't yet just as it touches it's going to read loosen it again a little bit it will read really high because it's not really touching it's arcing into touch more than actually touching and these numbers are useless numbers they don't tell you anything because if you've got a mod that's not actually touching the 510, it's not going to work. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and screw it in some. And now we're starting to make a good connection. About there is probably uh, the shortest mod I own, or the shortest atomizer 510 that I own, may only go in that far. Uh, that device would not work as well because it's not a really good connection but it is actually touching the 510 mostly when i go ahead and continue screwing it in you see it drops down to 0 0.005 um, sometimes when you're screwing it in it'll move around a little bit and not work right for a second anytime you're screwing it in you kind of screw it in leave it for a second and see what the reading stabilizes on so I just screwed it a little bit and I'm leaving it. Screwing it a little bit in and leaving it. Screwing it in a little bit and leaving it. Screwing it in a little bit and leaving it. And then I might even actually unscrew it a little bit. And unscrew it a little bit more. And then screw it in. And screw it in some more. And as I reach the very bottom 
of the connection. It's, the, it's compressed the spring all the way. I might get this point zero zero four that you see on your on the screen. I might have some atomizers that go all the way down to that, but uh, it's putting a lot of pressure on the spring, and and I don't know that I have any that go down that far. This is it's not like super. I could tighten it more, but you can also damage the five ten spring if you overdo this. So that's as tight as I'm willing to screw it in. Uh, that's 0 .004, I, 0 .005. I would consider that on the low side. And as I unscrew it, and kind of leave it each time I unscrew it just a little bit, 0 .005 is a pretty good number that I'm seeing. And in the absence of any additional information, I would probably go with 0 .005. However, I happen to know because I've screwed in a bunch of atomizers into this mod and I own a Hobo um, X aluminum which is known to be an extremely well calibrated device as is the Vapor Shark uh, DNA 200 Rev 3. Uh, those two devices are probably considered the best calibrated devices out there. There may be some more. Uh, I just happen to know a, a, a lot of discussion on the internet that those two are well known to be very well calibrated. Now, as you can see, I am actually maintaining .006, and the .006 is what I get on a Hobo X aluminum. Uh, I am going to use the .006. The difference between .006 and .005 is very small. And if I screw it in a little more, I get the point zero zero five. Um, that's very small. It would be great to be consistent to the point zero zero one number, and that is not very realistic. You get enough modification due to how deep your five ten connection goes that you're not going to get within point zero zero one using a shorting pin. Uh, you pr you should be able to get within the point zero zero five plus or minus point zero zero five range. I want to get significantly better than that so that I can put one addy on one mod, adjust it, and put it on a different mod, uh, load the profile, and expect it to work perfectly, uh, or at least two and a half minutes of messing with it to change it and get it perfect. Um, I have enough experience with this mod and with the uh, Hobo X that I'm going to go ahead and use point zero zero six. Um, if I again if I didn't have any additional information point zero zero five would work. Alright the other thing to say uh, and I'm bringing it up because I happen to have a Hobo X. The Hobo X does not have a spring-loaded 510. It has a uh, adjustable 510 that you adjust by using a screwdriver to screw it in and out. If you were adjust, if you were testing on such a device, then you do not want you, you want to screw your shorting pin until it is making a good solid connection and see what the reading is. And then you want to close the atomizer analyzer, unscrew the shorting pin, adjust it with your screwdriver to a different level, and then restart the atomizer analyzer. And the reason you want to do that is because this atomizer analyzer is putting probably microvolts levels through the coil to get a reading. And if you happen to hit the, the screwdriver on both the positive pin as you're adjusting it and touched the threading or got close to the threading even, you can have a spark. And I cannot imagine that that is good for your uh, uh, mod. So do not push a driver into this to adjust a, a screwdriver adjustable 510 
while the atomizer analyzer is running. If you get a short and, and you do something to your mod, that's on you. I have warned you as carefully as I can. Um, again, um, you can see that .005 and .006 are both appearing. I have found the .006 to be just the slightest bit more accurate, so I'm going to use that number. Uh, either one would have been fine. Frankly, they make no difference. All right, so you close that, you go back over to mod, and you change it to 0 0.006, because that's what I've decided to use. And you upload the settings to the device. Um, that We now have the therm on this mod, which is a different one than I was using before. Uh, the thermal settings are all set uh, from previous calibrations. We now have set the mod resistance, and the next video will show you how to set the battery calibration so that you get the maximum life out of your battery.